reseller clickbait podcast episode 12 man you are so good at that intro of you've perfected that man well, you know a dozen times we're up to 12 right now times you know hey perfection. a guy gets good in that that amount of time so, <laughs> what's up man hey, how are you doing jimmy I'm doing all right. What's up? What's yeah. that over your shoulder? You got a bunch of fleet Franks going on. What's going on? Yeah, I'm going full production on, full production. You know, of course, for those that might not have seen before, this is my, my, uh, poor man's and a man. It's a knockoff. I'm sure yep. Most, you know, so this is fleet Frank right here. <laughs> and, uh, got... just today, you know, I'm going full production. Yeah. You're, you're going to like to, to the senior home. You're going to, put together a craft day for all the seniors and have them make <laughs> what's going on. Yeah. You can have them make all the fleet Franks. Can Sorry, you ladies glue these googly eyes? Like when I think of like a craft day, I think of like a senior home and they have craft day that or kindergarten class, but that doesn't seem appropriate. So maybe the senior day would be better. <laughs> what was it like? Uh, what was the movie with Adam Sandler where he was the golfer? Was that happy, happy Madison? Gil happy, happy, happy Gilmore. Gilmore. Happy Madison is the company. And uh, his grandmother was uh, yeah. at that. And Ben Stiller was like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> making exactly. them all do quilts. for. That's how I picture it right now. <laughs> so that's what went through my head. I was like, I see Ken walking in with all these. Let's get it done. You got to have <laughs> that low gentlemen. unit cost yeah, and get grandma in them. there. <laughs> you better Hopefully grandma is spry. <laughs> Glue those googly, googly eyes on right. <laughs> I don't want to see no crooked, even though they... <laughs> that should be fun make sure you record that and uh tiktok I, or something <laughs> i will do that for sure do you have enough googly eyes in inventory to make all those in well i i think down in my my little cupboard here i think i have some googly eyes of varying sizes you know you don't want to you don't want to make them all identical you want to make them special so right Makes we'll sense. see how uh we'll see how the fleet frank uh goes here as the day's move along are you worried about shipping those at all like maybe like well they'll probably have to go ground because you know they are a liquid so i'm not right. going to try to slip that one past a box and it's leaked probably shouldn't <laughs> open it probably shouldn't open it probably shouldn't even handle that box you should probably should... <laughs> don't stick your finger in the edge and return like to cousin send... eddie <laughs> <laughs> lime <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Aunt Bethany. <laughs> That's a great scene, by the way. I love that. I love that movie. Man, it's almost time again. I talked last week about Christmas in July. Been yeah. watching all those Hallmark Christmas movies every right. day. We need a beard update. We can see, For those oh. watching, you can see a beard update. We got the Santa beard update. So here's, here's where, you know, not much, not much happens What's in happened? one week. But, and I, the, the plan is normally I just, let it go. I quit shaving it. I quit trimming it. And you know, about a month, month and a half in, it's just all scraggly looking. And, uh, and then I start to, as it gets fuller, then I start to shape it. It's uh, funny because I was telling you, I can't grow a beard that fast. So like I would, ha if I wanted to do that by Christmas, I had to start growing my beard like in March. Now I was just thinking like, if I want if I, I could grow my eyebrow hair, three weeks it'll be that long or, or ear hair <laughs> maybe you could weeks, just like I'd grow it down and comb it over to the so you could have some sideburns that come Sonia's from constantly picking on me that my eyebrows grow so fast why can't my beard hair grow as fast as my eyebrow hair like it's literally i'll be walking around like this and like what is <laughs> look like andy rooney like, like they're rubbing against the bill of my hat <laughs> <laughs> Like so, they become a sweat band after a while. Yeah, be, yeah, exactly. Like I don't get any sweat in my eyes because I got caterpillars. <laughs> my, yeah, it's, it's always shocking when I color when I when I color my beard because I do my hair, I do my eyebrows and everything. And to yeah. look in the mirror the first time when the towel comes off. I mean, when those is, uh, we put the pictures up last week, it was pretty shocking. You do not look the same. You look like a different person. Yes. I guess that's what you're going for. It's always uh and the thing about growing a Santa beard is you always have to grow it in the, the hottest months of the year, you know, <laughs> like, and then in July, good idea. afterwards I shave it off, you know, so it's not to confuse the kids, you know, I don't want to be out at Walmart in March <laughs> with a big old white Santa beard. So it's why not? 
be on the it's... beach with swim trunks and no <laughs> I do have some I do have some pictures of me in full Santa regalia uh lounging by the pool and uh that was a a Christmas in July sort of thing I did one year that was a that was a good time that sounds awful I mean a beard it, in the summer it was it was hot well the whole Santa suit is hot anyway and uh no. and on that uh, actually the the bad experience from that is i had my cell phone there's no pockets in my santa pants and i had my cell phone kind of tucked into the waistband and i stood up by the edge of the Whoop. pool and my phone slid right down the inside leg of my pants oh. right down into the swimming pool no it's like uh, it's Was time it for an upgrade breeze? anyway no oh, yeah. that's but there's well, the Santa beard update for awesome. week two. Week two. Yeah, I just can't wait till like week twelve, and it's just, it's not, <laughs> it's just be. Pff. But but it's, yeah, by the time I'm in in your area visiting, I wonder how it's gonna. Yes, it's gonna be uncomfortable. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have you know what? It, it I've usually always had a beard, so it doesn't it doesn't really. But there there gets to be points when you grow it where when it gets so long it gets itchy for yeah. a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of grow out past that in, you know, three or four days or so. And uh, so and then when you have a, uh, when you have a fat neck like mine, like it rubs against right here. So then this itches. Yeah, <laughs> so it my is. chest itches too, because of my, my quadruple rolls of my chins. When I brush it all fun. out too, and then I can catch it out of the corner of my eye. I can see it's like start scaring yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Who's here? <laughs> but yeah, we're just like uh, a few weeks, like about a month away. You'll be in my area. We'll be hitting uh, 127 highway sales and then the uh, like the yeah. Lincoln Highway Byway Route 30 sales that, that cut all the way across the highway. Like you said, that's a month away. So we'll get to that in due time in these episodes something that's coming up sooner it's coming up next weekend yes we are going to be doing what day is it what day is this draft we're going to be doing a reseller draft that ray and dustin over at nashville flippers set up what date is that yeah it is sunday the 24th is when their live podcast uh is taped Yep. And yeah, so Ray and Dustin, they're Nashville flippers. Check them out. We'll link that down in the hopefully. Thing. But we were on uh Sunny Las Vegas' show with yep. when you're on there every Thursday night, and I was a special guest. And then he brought on Ray and he brought on Carrie American Arbitrage. We we're talking podcast that week, but Ray had this great idea to do like a reseller draft pick, like to see yeah, yeah. who can draft the best. best reseller team and then yeah. i don't really know what's going to go on from there if if the the chat or whoever decides who ended up with the the best reselling team yeah yeah so we were we were to submit at least five draft picks yep. that we wanted to put in the pool of drafts and then there's he's going to add a bunch more so maybe you're not even drafting all the folks that are on your list Right. But you gave a, you gave out your list yeah, on I, Sunday on the last podcast. So, And when I was looking at my list, I was like, I sure hope this isn't for a basketball team because this would make <laughs> the worst possible <laughs> basketball team you could think of height-wise. If you want, I'll I'll break down my list. Yeah, we'll we'll go we'll go one and one and we'll see we'll see who's on our list. At least the this the the kind of the short list that goes into the pool yep. and uh, we'll see who our final draft picks are, but who who's up in no particular order. Mine will be a particular, I'm going to go from shortest to tallest. <laughs> <laughs> so leading off the shortest person yes. on my list. And I'm not, there's only one of them that I have not met. So I'm not sure of his height. So I think he's second. So we'll go with the first okay. on my list is art. The art of resell out of Las Vegas. Yes. Um, I love the stuff he's finding. I love the way he negotiates and he is putting out great videos. So I had to go with art. He's definitely a, a top 
a top first rounder on anybody's again point guard sure. we're gonna have nothing but point guards on this team <laughs> and uh, we'll have a cut we'll have one center. <laughs> one center let me see who would be the center on my team yeah i've got i got average height but i'm gonna probably say so i'll i'll take my first pick and we'll go at center as right. i have uh john cincinnati picker yeah, he's pretty tall. He's, yep. he's pretty tall guy. So that was he's on my list, John That's Cincinnati. A no brainer pick. I mean, yes. he's been doing it for years. He's been flipping amazing things for a long time. A lot of us learn. Oh yeah, what things to sell watching him. So that's well. Good. Here's here's what I want to say about my list too. I chose my list based on folks that that are say like-minded to me, they pick the same sort of stuff that I I like that I'm, I'm entertained by them. People that I would want to go out sourcing with not only to find good things, but, and learn from, but just to have a good time because I think they're, they're, they're fun folks. So. Right. um, I agree. That's, that's actually three of the people on my list. That's the reason I picked them. Um, My second pick is another one. I picked him. Because and I think he's second on the list height wise. Okay. Again, we're talking five one, five two, five three in that area. Um, but that's and he has one of the, the second best name in the reseller YouTube community. Okay. That's Chris Old School Picker. Chris Old School. Oh yes. Now, that's he definitely sources for the you know toys, vintage stuff. He's definitely looking for a lot of the same stuff that I look for, and I enjoy watching his videos and see what he finds and sells. And again, I think there's like an East Coast bias for yard sales. I know I'm making this up, but like (laughs) the the vintage stuff he's finding, man, that just doesn't, yeah, almost doesn't exist out here in Colorado. (laughs) Yeah, it's uh, yeah, he picks up a lot of a lot of great stuff. Chris old school picking. Hey, maybe in the basketball thing, maybe when you guys see one another, you should play, you know, maybe a game of horse or something to see who gets who gets control of the old school yeah, yeah. moniker. Maybe a lowered rim for these guys, though. There I, you I don't go. know if we can go <laughs> 10 feet regulation. We and might one of those use little mini eight, basketballs. <laughs> one <laughs> of those one of those play school <laughs> basketball courts. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Having a little bit of fun with your height. I apologize, or do I? <laughs> I would go, okay, second, we'll go with the second person on my list. That we'll stay with another Chris. Uh, this is a guy that I like to to watch a lot because uh, he's been oh, known right. as the king of plush. Oh, I gotcha. Is K- Chris Cajun reseller. Yep. Is finds a lot of good stuff out there. A lot of the same types of toys. Uh, he, you know, he the finds clothing, plush that the I just plush. I not believe how much they're worth. And if you watch Chris's videos, I'm not sure where the guy sleeps in that house with all of the, <laughs> it's like every room He's is like a different plush room. A bed with plush <laughs> wall, from wall to wall plush on his bed. And like, he just kind of cuddles up with him like you do. I would, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gets his musk all over them. <laughs> <laughs> but I would go with, uh, Chris Cajun reseller on my my nice. list for the pool. Now, oh. my next pick. Yes. And th- these aren't picks. I'm sorry. These are people we're adding to the pool. So it's not yes. a pick. It's a person that I added to the pool. I've been saying that wrong this whole time. So the next person I added to the draft pool, height a little bit taller. I think we're moving up a little bit. I actually picked him because how much I've learned watching his videos. That's Kevin Commonwealth Picker. Yes. I love watching his videos. I love learning and I love the way he communicates with the sellers and he, he strikes deals with them. And it's just a fun interaction with all those videos. So I like, I've learned a lot watching him, not just what to buy and sell, but how to make a YouTube video. Yes. So um, that's why I picked him. He, he could be, he could be number one on anybody's list. Yep. Good choice. Good choice. Oh, with Kevin I appreciate that. Okay. I'm going to go. Uh, this guy would probably not make it on anybody's team. Any, anywhere, any basketball team, uh, not a sports. 
Yes, I'm choosing Jimmy Ozga. <laughs> He's not a sports guy, and admittedly so. I don't think – I'm not sure how tall this guy is. You've met him in person. He's not tall. I think I know who you're talking about. He's not tall. He's a little bit I'm, taller than you would imagine, but he's not very tall. I'm going with Dave N.C. Picker. Yeah, he's in the, in the pool. About five, six, five, seven range. <laughs> okay. All right, so, yeah, he's a little taller than I was giving him credit for. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought when when – I had heard about how short he was. I was thinking five one. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, you're not that short. He's, uh, but he's not a self admittedly, if you watched, he's not yeah, a he's, he's, not a he's, a, he's guy. more of a new kids on the block kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> not, much, not much into sports, but not, he loves a good that, new kids on the block concert. Proven to some Rick Astley, never gonna give you up. <laughs> yeah, he's all, please don't go. <laughs> Anyways, Dave, that was some great Instagram material there, bud. So, so Dave NC Picker. Did I say who did I say? I said who, who? All right, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought I said a wrong name just now. Okay, so you're uh, you're up next. Uh next is one of my favorite YouTube channels. I kind of go all fan reseller on him about him because i've been watching him forever and he's one of the ogs that i started watching i, I know where you're going the collectibles and toys i know where you're video going games it's mike shad juice was shad my juice. next pick to the pool yes. um again he's been doing it he's been making videos for a long time i learned a lot from him again with editing and what to look for and he looks for a lot of the same stuff or I should say, I look for the same stuff that he looks for because he was doing it way before me. Yeah, and he's a and he's a fellow Ohioan. So yeah, he's from Ohio. So that he's got that against him. That kind of. <laughs> 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 yeah, Mike Shadjus. That that's a that's a great pick right there, man. I like. Why do I like your list better than my list? I don't know. No, I love my list. I love my. No, your list is solid. Pick. It Dave is. It is. Questionable. Dave is questionable, but that's all right. Well, it, <laughs> the rest of the team will lift them we'll up. We'll pull. I have to, you know, anchor my own team here, I guess. <laughs> okay. I am going with this pick. Just a guy I've been following. Got to meet him at the, the reseller rally when we were there. Uh, I enjoy his videos, uh, his knowledge. Again, picking some of the same stuff that, that you I do. Me, I oh, appreciate it, man. I, it those is are you. kind words. Well, things. you know what? They We were excluded from this list. We weren't allowed to pick. because We're not I, allowed to put our amazing picking abilities into the pool. Yeah. Because I'm not just, you know, blowing smoke here. Now, Jimmy, you said you kind of fanboy out over Mike's shad juice. <laughs> but here's the thing. I fanboy out over jimmy old school flips i get to do a podcast oh, with him every it. day <laughs> no, i'm serious you were you're 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 one of my top guys and you were on my list until i reviewed that we weren't allowed to pick each other so i got the boot between you know you and i and 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 uh, ray I mean, dust find a loophole. like i could pick wr hart they might they would never there you go. W.R. Hart, right down there is the name. <laughs> my new my new wrestling character. Hey, which, you know, El Luchador was was always the wrestling you reseller. You got to retire, man. You got to get some, like, Owen Hart or uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. Some tights. Some Knight pink Hart. tights. Pink and black. Oh, maybe know. that's what I'll do after a the wig. Santa beard. Dude, get a black wig and some sunglasses. Oh my goodness! I think after the Santa heart. beard is done, when I go to shave, I'm j I'm gonna get me a Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Yes. I'm gonna dye it red. Yep. And I'm just you gotta going get sunglasses. And you got yep. W. But you know, the El Luchador was always El Luchador. He was the wrestling reseller. Yeah, yeah. W. R. Heart. Coincidence? Maybe not. Wrestling reseller heart. How about yeah. them apples? It's perfect. No and so again, so we got because you come up with this amazing. I, we we have, got those trash to cashers over there that to thank for that. They've uh, 
given me a new moniker and uh, you have a new no character. Choice. You have to introduce us to wrestling reseller Hart. I will do that. We'll have him on as a special guest one day on the podcast. Yep. It has to happen. I mean, <laughs> because we all know how you love to edit. <laughs> I've already pictured him in my mind what he looks like, and it's amazing. All right. So I'm sorry. Who did? Okay. Who did you pick? We're we're going to go who from the, uh, the what I don't know what the Peach State or whatever Georgia from, down in Georgia. We're going with Adam Baldy Powell Baldy picking. Powell. Not a basketball player either. No, he is not, but he's a great picker. I tell you, I enjoy, I enjoy watching Sorry, all of Adam's stuff. He he's a great dunk guy. On me and I'm making up talking trash. <laughs> <laughs> <Dunk> on my. <laughs> so he is in the pool, Adam Baldy Powell picking. Nice. So, okay. Uh, so I have so one last what, person what, that I. This four, is the last, my last one, right? Yes. This is the last person I added to the pool. I had to represent Colorado, where I live. Um, and a channel that I've been watching a lot of recently, and I it's Chris and Kathy, but I just met Kathy, so I'm going with Kathy over at Ginger Marvin. Ah, there we go, I, Colorado. Yes, got to get your home state in there for sure. Yep, I didn't pick anybody. Oh, yeah, Cincinnati Picker. What am I talking about? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got I, state represented, gotta represent the state. So that's a great pick right there, man. You could, you could just draft that lineup right there and probably, and probably finish second <laughs> because to you. we all know them. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. let's see who your uh, final addition my, to the draft pool. I got an ace here. I got a ringer on my list. Last place from the Lone Star state. And all kinds of other states because she's everywhere. She's everywhere. <laughs> I'm going with Lady Lunk Junk Danica. <laughs> Lady Lunk Junk Danica. Lady Lunk. Lady I Luck Junk Danica. Lady Luck Junk Danica. The she, most exciting player added to the pool so far. She's fine. She would be like watching the Harlem Globetrotters, I think. Exactly. She's got Rest antics. In a fox costume running around That's, a thrift store. That's her game is, you know, deception. She's wily. She's yeah, uh, who, who tries to get kicked out of the bins and then has a great day <laughs> sourcing there. Like, I don't even... uh, uh, yeah, I think that that Danica and I outsourcing together would just be an absolute uh, yeah. train wreck. Yeah, it'd be so or I feel bad for anybody person. that works at those thrift stores. <laughs> <laughs> she is fun. For sure. <laughs> So, okay, so we got top our top five that we put in the pool. Yep. And cool. so we we're, we're looking for Sonny's list. We're looking for Dave and or not Dave, but Ray and Ray. Dustin. And Dustin. If Dustin's playing, I'm not sure if he was in the pool or if he was going to be the official referee. I know he brought it. He asked him about it. I'm not sure if that's verified. Was Carrie involved in this? I don't believe so. Ray no. had brought that up before Carrie was in the chat. So I'm not, we might end up with a surprise right. guest that evening. But uh, so that is, we'll throw a link to their channel, uh, Nashville Flippers. They do a live on Sunday evenings. Yep. I don't know what time it's like 9 30 30 central time, 8 30 central. So which is 9 30 Eastern. Yes. And yeah. 7 30 Mountain, right? Yep. So yeah, check that out fun. on the 24th. And yeah, it should be. And, and it's great that those, that those guys invited us to partake yeah. in their show, kind of a little collaboration, if you so will. We're going to have like a vote like for the best team afterwards. I'm yeah. not sure what the rules are. Yeah, I'm not sure are. how we're going to decide who had the best drafted team, but I know there will be like participation ribbons and stuff like that. Um, oh yeah, Does, everybody gets a partition rate, participation <laughs> yeah, ribbon so these days. I know there'll be a way to find. We're gonna have some kind of vote or something, I believe, to see who had the best pick team. Hey, and just think, that's all from their channel, so you don't have to edit anything, Jimmy. You just have to show up, make those picks. Thank goodness, and finish second to me. I feel like that's all I do is edit videos anymore. I just was editing a man, video before we recorded this. I told you, man, because you're putting out consistent, great 
content. That's well, what I mean, you're I'm doing. doing one a week, but I need to take advice from Ray because I, I'm running out of room on my SD cards. That's why I had to edit a video. <laughs> like, uh, this SD card is full and this one's getting there. So I need an external hard drive. Until I get that, though, I literally was like, I better edit a video to get yeah. this off of <laughs> that yeah. SD card. Are you going to buy new SD cards and batteries for your trip east? Or I think I'll be all right as long as they're I, – I do – I'll be editing videos like crazy before I leave to have my SD cards cleared out. Yeah, I have some pretty good-sized ones, so I should be fine. And I have two batteries. Maybe I'll get a third battery. Good plan. Good plan. <laughs> you think I should? I think do. I'll, you think I'll need a third battery? Yeah. Yeah, you're probably you never right. know. You're out there all day. <laughs> Those folks that you're meeting up with. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll probably get a third GoPro bet. Uh, Kevin has like 75 of them, so I guess three <laughs> wouldn't hurt for me to have three. Kevin carries like a backpack with jumper cables, yeah. and he's never going to be out of power. You should see Dave NC Picker. He's got like a GoPro backpack. He's got all. He's got the best setup I've seen. He looks like he's on a mission when he's out there <laughs> recording. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely not at that level. But I'll work on it. I'll, I'll probably get another battery. I don't know. SD cards are expensive, so probably just a battery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. But um, I want to talk a little bit about because I've been watching a lot of YouTube and I've been watching a lot of um art and then Matt part time pickers and they've been spending yeah. a lot of time at the flea markets, man. Okay, yes. I'm just wondering, should I? I have one close to the house. It's five miles away. When's the should last time you were there? there? Uh, it was, it's was. it been five months ago. Oh, okay. And before that, it was three years ago. <laughs> I don't go there very often. Well, maybe you should. Why? Okay, let's, let's address that. Why do you not go to the flea market that's five minutes from your house on a regular basis? Because I'm in Colorado, yes. and if the flea market's open, yard sales are going on. So I've always felt yard sales are better. Is it an Opportun outdoor flea market? It is outdoor. Okay. So now I do believe there's opportunity in the fall to go to the flea market over yard sales. But the main reason, my main thought is because I've – Never gone because I thought everything would be priced too high. And, you know, there's a lot of the commercial yeah. stuff in the front end of the flea market. But in the back, there are definitely the guys that are doing, like, the storage lockers and just trying to flip stuff fast. A, yeah. lot, a lot of what I see in, in Art and Matt's videos, you know, spending up a little bit for some really good stuff, though. And, like, these, these people they're buying from literally know that they are – going to resell it they they purposely say like i'm gonna leave some meat on the bone for you so you can yeah. make some money on this deal too it's almost the kind of contact you want to make and yes. connection you want to make so what do you think like do you think i should start and then the nerves of recording there like like i'm nervous to go record there well, it's probably like any place else as far as the recording. You know, you're always nervous the first time when you go into yard sales or to in an estate sale or something like that. It just throw the camera on for push play or record. Don't push. See, play. I'm not worried because these are business owners. A lot of them. Yeah, it's not someone at their at in their house at, just having a yard sale just to make like these Worst are case scenario. They ask you to turn it off because I have noticed Matt respectfully he has people that have told him they don't want to be on a camera and he makes sure they're not on camera so yeah um, i think you should i think you, on on some we've talked here recently that you know the sales here the yard sales anyway have been a little bit slower right here around that july 4th end of june first part yeah um, i'd say give it now is it just open what friday saturday friday saturday, saturday and sunday i believe i so i would probably so there's my other question. And uh, you know what? Another person I've seen do flea markets is Dave. He's done a lot of them too, NC Picker. Yeah. Question I would have for them, maybe I should just reach out to these guys. Is Sunday a bad day because the guys bring out stuff for the weekend and by Sunday, just like a yard sale, it's been picked through so much that they won't have a lot? Or are they bringing fresh inventory out on a Sunday? 
You know, I picture a guy coming down there Friday through Sunday, and the first day he has all, you know, he brings everything, and the second day the same truckload, you know, with that had been picked through, and then the third day the same truckload that has been completely picked through. So I guess that's just something I'm going to find out on my own. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's it's worth investigating at least because you never know. You might uh, what I have found with the flea markets around here. We have a couple different types. We have the indoor flea markets that are yeah. always there, and will seem commercial to me. Those and and like retail. Well, their prices are, you know, because everybody there, you know, I think they all either have a name tag of either like Mike or Frank because they all think they're American pickers <laughs> out there. And, you know, everything that you ask about is, well, you know, that goes for this much on eBay. And it's like, I didn't ask you how much it went for. I want to know how much you want for yeah, it. Yeah. I found that our flea markets around here that are like established are there all the time. Uh, right. I don't, I don't waste my time. Now there's one really big flea market that's held once a month. Uh, and it's, it's huge. I went there the first weekend this year and what I found was all resellers. I mean, lots of great stuff right. that, that, but all of it was everything that I comped. I probably was there three hours maybe even a little more. Everything that I comped was already at eBay pricing. Now you did find some folks that had just come to set up to get rid of some of their stuff. Yep. You could find a couple of couple of deals and those are the ones that you probably in your case would need to get to on Friday. Right. And and hit some of those folks. But I actually I didn't buy I didn't buy one thing that whole time I spent there looking and comping great vintage toys great vintage just everything clothing but the, See, the when price I went there, wasn't there when i went there two years ago i did okay and i wasn't as good at picking then mm -hmm. you know i didn't know what i you know what to look for nearly as well and i did okay you know the some of the things i know to look for is like nothing's a dollar everything's two three dollars yeah um and if it's a decent item it's five to eight dollars uh, so I know you'll be spending up some, you know, I, I talk yeah. about like art, you know, he, he goes, when he goes, he sees a lot of the same guys, a lot of the same vendors. Um, and they always have new, that's what I'm saying. They always are bringing in new, I'm guessing they're like storage locker guys, or they, they actually go to the thrifts Monday through Friday. And then that's how they flip is at the flea market. Yeah. Well, like he bought that drone. We were talking about, he bought a drone for like 250 bucks, but that, drone is worth like seven hundred dollars or more so yeah yeah like if he would he just deciding to keep it but if he would have flipped it he's still making a really good profit on that drone yes it's that is a, a skill set that i am working on I, and when i say skill set of learning about paying up for right. good quality items that are going to sell you know i still have that same mindset of those one and two dollar items at the yard sales uh and you know as you learn categories and as you learn items and what i'm the, not gonna what lie the, the skill set i would like to see you learn if you're going to flea markets is balloon animals <laughs> if you learn how to make some good balloon because the guy that made a balloon animal for me at the flea market was terrible <laughs> right? i need you to learn how to do that travel around and <laughs> And I'll blow them all up. That's what I'll do. My special will be blowing them all up with just my mouth. What do you, what does he do? He just I, blows up balloons. <laughs> yeah, a, here you go. It's a sword. Wait, but what else does he do? No, that's it. He, just, <laughs> he does swords and bananas and uh the kids are like, Can you make me can you make me a power ranger? Nope. <laughs> Not happening. No, but there's a brown, a brown sword. That's all the balloons I Get have. Brown here, and white. Kid. <laughs> Sorry, I went way off track, but that, you know, I just reminded me when I went to the flea market in Vegas that terrible balloon animal that I had made. Um, so yeah, you're you're looking to spend up, and that's something I've been doing for yeah. a while now. I do feel like it's a big part of what I call leveling up in reselling. Yeah, once you start getting some funds saved up, it's time to start to not be afraid. 
to spend up yeah. for some good inventory. You will still find here, you will still find like you were before really good items for low prices, like yeah. that blow your mind. But I've bought so much stuff that I've spent up on that I've made a lot of money on yeah. because I was not afraid to spend money on some good inventory. So, and I feel like the flea market would open up more maybe. avenues to more items that may be spending up, but sell for a lot more. Like, yeah, the it's stores all of that. Comp- Cause again, all the stuff that I found was all, it was already, there was, there was no meat on the bone. So weird. Whatever, whatsoever. Um, Cause like I said, when I went, there was again, a twenty dollar item I was paying four dollars for. You know, I wasn't getting yeah. it for a dollar. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's what you know. In my my learning process of paying up for stuff, you know, I'm I'm usually in that you know things that I'm buying that fifty cents, one dollar, two dollar, you know, yeah. say five dollar or less range, and I'm paying for stuff and and flipping for real good. It's those you know I'm kind of getting into that ten dollar range that I'm going to pay for. Now, something. And, Make no doubt about it, folks. Ken is still going to offer them 50 cents for a $200 oh, item. He's oh, still going to say, hey, will you take 50 I, cents for this $200 snap-on tool? And they're going to say, I worked the lady crazy? over at a sale here recently, She and she was just holding. I think I tried every price range that there was. You know, I was into was like, like, like $10.37 for this. <laughs> But uh, no, it ended up being, it was one of those items again. Okay. I'll, I'm going to back up to in that picking the, the better paying up for an item and gaining a better sale puts more money in the, in the coffers to be able to buy better inventory when you're bringing it, you know, yeah. The ROI on something that you buy for a dollar yeah. and you sell it for 15 is that's great. But if you're buying something for, like for instance, I bought this little like a home network. Uh, it's like a three unit, like a Nest system. Yeah, yeah. And they wanted twenty dollars for it. This was just like last week at the sales. They wanted twenty dollars for it. And I tried, you know, I tried ten, I tried fifteen, seventeen. Not yep. she wasn't much, but I knew it was a good item. I had comped it and I listed it and I sold it, you know, in the same week for one twenty five. So. Yeah. That's, yep. you know, it was, it took $20 out of my cash that I had, you know, that I take out right. card selling. It's like, oh, I'm not going to be able to buy as much today. Not that I'm limited, but, you know, you see, say, Art, we were talking about uh, Art Resale. You know, he's there at the flea market and there's an ATM machine right there. Yeah. Uh, you don't always That's have that good. when you're out. <laughs> yeah, it is. When you're out at the yard sales, you don't have atm right they have an atm and street tacos in the same location uh, that's dangerous for me like <laughs> that is scary stuff like you can get as many street tacos as you want because there's an atm right there it's just unlimited Not funds good. and churros oh, dangerous <laughs> now i'm hungry i think i'm going to go fix something to eat hey you brought up art and so before we leave yes. i want to talk about art his, his <laughs> most recent video he, he the man on is like, on a mission. He he went on like a tangent at the beginning of the video. He's like, that's the right word, right? Sonia uses that tangent, word. Tangent, yes. Um, and I didn't know what that word is until I met Sonia. I was like, what are you talking about? It's not the little orange fruit that's like yeah, that. Like an I thought orange. she was talking about a tangerine. Yeah, so true. anyways, he's so Arby's has a YouTube channel. <laughs> and they have like 30,000 subs, 30,000 plus. 31 subs. point something or another, I think. And Art something. is furious that they have more <laughs> subs than him. And he is determined <laughs> to pass their sub count. He Ooh, hates their food. Arby's. The only thing he likes from there is their sauce. But what are you doing with their sauce if you don't like their food? Are you taking it home and putting it on some other food? Maybe a street taco? I don't know. So, I mean, they me- have. Go ahead. Ar- Arby's, they have the meats over there. Now they have the YouTube channel. They yeah, don't have do. the meats anymore. They have it's the YouTube growing. channel. I want to know who do we have? Like if we our what's our what's our Arby's YouTube channel that we need to try to pass? Oh, like man. we need to do some research 
and find someone that has double our subs, which is 214, and try to pass them. Oh, I was going to say, you could try to, we could just set a goal to try to beat my personal channel, SSK <laughs> Promo, but we're, we're only like 50 away from that or hey, 40 or. So, no, we need to find something that, okay. I don't know that we're going to find something that is known that has that few subs, but I like that art set a goal. And he found he found something that he's like, this is not possible that they have. <laughs> like, it's just some guy saying we have the meat sweats or whatever he says. <laughs> and Art's like, no way, man. My videos are way better than this. And their food sucks. Nobody <laughs> likes their, their, their roast beef sandwiches or their curly fries. Actually, their curly fries aren't terrible. They are. You say they're terrible? They are not terrible. Oh no, I I like Arby's personally. I do too. Actually, Arby's is a hollow is a holiday food for me. Like growing growing up. Okay. During the it's, I don't know if you knew this. Like uh, as a fat kid, I knew this. <laughs> Arby's always ran their five for five during the holiday season. So in my household, that meant because we were always looking for deals on fast food, we ate Arby's during the holidays as a teenager, and so. Nice. I think of the holidays when I think of Arby's. I don't eat it a lot during the rest of the, and now they've got they they don't do that anymore. But Jimmy's having 90, like the bacon cheddar for Christmas dinner. <laughs> no, it was just <laughs> straight regular roast beef sandwiches back then yeah. with some Arby and horsey sauce. Uh, but now, I remember like we because in the nineties, early two thousands, it was a thing. Like every holiday season, my mom would remind yeah. us. Yeah. It's holiday season, so Arby's has the five for five. Let's go. So it's a Christmas memory. Now, see, you lost me when you said the horsey sauced out. Not a fan oh, at all. What's this? Our fourth fight now? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Uh no. Are I, you trying to tell me you don't like the horsey sauce? I do not. Now, do not you like prime rib with? Horseradish uh, cream? No, no horseradish. That's why I don't like. Now I love prime rib with the with the au jus though. Uh, <sighs> dip it in the au jus sauce. Or I also don't care for. Now I love seafood. But probably my favorite food, seafood, like you know your your shrimp, lobster, crab, that sort of stuff. But cocktail sauce? <sighs> what? No, no, no. So I can no. only eat seafood deep fried. And then dipped in cocktail sauce. And then I love my, I think my favorite food is prime rib with horseradish cream sauce. Yeah. I, so, that's, it's a, it's a fan favorite everywhere, but I I'm love just, it when it like burns the nostrils. <laughs> uh, I'm now all uh, oh, prime. I've been hungry for prime rib lately anyway. And now where's the spot out there to get it so we can go while we're out there. Uh, we have a kind of a, a local place. They just have two locations. It's called Steve's Dakota Grill. All right, we're going there. And Steve uh, Dakota, we're, we'll be Steve's Dakota Grill. And they have a great prime rib. Wait, and, Steve, uh, Steve's Dakota Grill in Ohio. Yeah, I'm confused by that. There's one, and it's convenient that there's one in my city, and the other one is in Jill City. So, hey, yo, so wherever you we're at, it? we can get prime rib dinner. That sounds fantastic. It is. It's great stuff. So we'll have to go there when I'm out there. We will do it. Prime rib with horse. Rib. So back to the Arby's. Yes. What were we talking about? I don't even remember. Well, we're we're nowhere we're near talking there. About so. Art and and he's trying to get the sub count to meet. Up. I like that he's standing out in their parking lot, ye yelling at the, <laughs> yelling at at the, the building. building. <laughs> I'm coming for you. And they're inside. Like, who's that little guy out there yelling at us? <laughs> you, does he need help getting up the curb? What's going on? Out there? <laughs> Sorry, Art. Don't hate me, buddy. <laughs> no, but he's out there yelling, pointing at him. So that I was a that, great. Yeah, that, was that was a great was intro. Probably one of the best intros to a video. Well, everybody, go help Art get past Arby's yes. sub count on YouTube. If all 30,000 of you that are listening to this right now go sub to use. art, you know, because <laughs> yeah. we know you're not subbing to us. So you might as well do something with your time. Go click that button over there on <laughs> art or resell and get, get him past the Arby's 
stub count because <laughs> it's ridiculous, folks. How does a sandwich store have more subs than art of resale? It's completely oh, understandable they have more subs than me or this podcast, but anyways, like, like, uh, next week I want to talk about the 127 yard sale because it's getting yes. closer and closer. Yes. And closer, and there's just a lot of great reseller events coming up. I mean, that that are big meetups and big conventions and all that stuff. It just you, you if a guy had time and money to go to them all, it just yeah, yeah. it's going to be a great fall for all of that. Oh stuff. man, like I'm like, because then there's FlipCon, and then there's the one in Vegas coming up in October. Boss reseller even, mix, and like remix some, or whatever. I'm just yeah, the Boss reseller remix or whatever. I think that's what it's called. Um, I don't. I, I'm definitely not going to FlipCon because it's too close. But then, man. Yeah, I was looking at at that FlipCon know. the other day, and then some smaller ones. You got, you know, Dante Prison of Profit. He's having another is he event over? Yeah, over in North Carolina. That's. Uh, I've been trying to get him to get one. He's up in Michigan now. And low, like Lower Michigan, which is just is a he? couple hours for me. I'm trying to get him to hold one up there. I was looking oh, at how yeah. close you are to some cities, man. Maybe we should, um, maybe I'm, I want to see, I don't think I really want to, but like I could go see Pittsburgh. I could go see Indianapolis. I could go see Detroit. I yeah. could go see all those cities while I'm visiting. I won't, but I could. Yeah. Yeah. They're all, uh, you know, Detroit, three hours, Pittsburgh, three hours, Indianapolis, probably three to four. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, you know, and of course you got, Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati that are all right here. They're all Cincinnati. I like Cincinnati. I'm yeah. sure I will be going through Cincinnati again for sure. When we talk about the 127, yes, next week I want to talk about if you're okay with it, your participation in that event. It's okay. still up in the air, and you won't give me a straight answer. So we're gonna <laughs> discuss I'm a that loser, next, Jimmy. We're going to discuss loser. that next week, whether you like it or not. So and you better be prepared to commit. That's what you want out yeah, of me. Is yes or no. I want an answer. The guy I've known for two years and just gave me his cell phone number. Like, you know, there's only so much a co-host can handle. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, next, I next week we're pain. talking about 127 and we're talking about if Ken is going or not, because it's yes. still up in the air folks. I had a lot of fun hanging out with you. That 45 minutes went by super quick. Yes. Hey, um, I want to update one thing from last oh, week, though. Did I forget something? You did not. Just oh. a quick, this was towards the end of the show last week. I did do my high-level scientific study, and I believe that the majority of the time it is the washer that turns my underwear inside out, but washer. some does come from the dryer, too. See, just by nature of the way I take my underwear off. It, it's the right side. <laughs> yeah. That's what the, it As, for those of you that are listening or just listening, Jimmy's swirling around. his doing his underwear impression. That, like I'm getting ready to swing on the pole or something. It ready to be turned inside out. I got gotcha. you. And uh, so, yeah, that's, um, so that's us. We don't need to go into all the parameters of the testing, but we're going to say it's the washer. <laughs> Uh, it is a um, an LG brand washer, so if you're experiencing the same thing, you know, maybe we should get a Facebook group together or something. So, all right, Jimmy, all it's right. been good. Had a lot of fun. We'll catch you next week on the Reseller Clickbait Podcast.